the Joe Rogan experience. You know, he's standing like a, a, a striker. Mm -hmm. He stands like a striker. Like, so does uh, Jorge Masvidal. Yeah. He stands straight up. Man, his striking is really, like, really good. Nasty. Looking really good. His fight with Nate was fucking awesome. Nasty. He's so good, man. So good. So clever. So good. So funny. He's mm -hmm. hilarious. He's I think funny. he's hilarious. I really, I really like both those he's, guys. You know what else he is? He's fucking mean. That's a mean dude. Mm -hmm. There's something like when, when they asked him about the Ben Askren shot, was it necessary to punch him again on the ground? He goes, it was super necessary. Super necessary. That became like a big hashtag, super necessary. Dude, it's hilarious. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. But hey, man, he's in the fucking hurt game. You can't play your bullshit. For sure. Nonsense in and the if, hurt game. And if everybody's picking a, uh, a gimmick or whatever and they're trying to push and everyone's trying to be Connor, why not be yourself who's fucking like, yeah. just mean? <laughs> you're, you're mean. Yeah, and super Dope. talented. So just talented. Slick. So much experience. People don't know. That guy knocked out Eve Edwards with a head kick in Bodog. Mm -hmm. Eve Edwards. And Eve Edwards is a slick striker, especially back then. That was Eve Edwards when Eve Edwards was arguably the best 155 pounder in the world. That was after he knocked out Josh Thompson in that highlight reel mm -hmm. where he throws that that round kick off spinning the spin. Spinning back fist. Yep, yep. Spinning back, back fist, and he throws a round kick and catches him right in the neck. It's still like the UFC's like, yep. little yep. clip. And it's Josh fucking Thompson, who's one of Thompson. the toughest guys to ever live. Another monster. Another monster. I mean, that was the last guy to knock out Nate. Before, yeah. Uh, the before kick, yeah. yeah, before Masvidal had stopped him, he was the first guy to ever stop Nate. Right, you know, and Josh is as good as it gets. You know, when when you see that fight, I mean, that was two guys who easily could have done the same to each other, mm -hmm. and just timed it, played out Eve that way. Wait, landed the perfect shot, and it was a neck kick. It was just fucking spectacular. At that time, Eve was thought to be absolutely one of the very best fighters in the world and probably the best 155 pounder alive. 100%. But the UFC changed the division. They gave up the 155 division back then. I remember it. It was very disheartening. Yeah. Because I was like, there's so much talent in this division. But they were hemorrhaging money, man. This is all pre-Ultimate uh, Fighter. They didn't know what they were doing hmm. in terms of, like, the future. They were $44 oh, right, million yeah. dollars in debt. They were like, what are we doing? We're going to sell this? Are we Are going to keep it? They just had their balls, though. Lorenzo Fertitta, Frank Fertitta, and Dana White, all three of them have balls. They were just like, let's just, let's just ride. Let's let it ride. They were calling Dana up going, look for a buyer. Let's find a buyer. We got to get out of this. Like, we're not going to lose our family's fortune. We're $44 million in the hole in this cage fighting shit. Obviously, this is too brutal for America. They're not really into it. But then they figured it out. That Ultimate Fighter show, they financed the whole show, paid for all of it, paid for the whole thing, paid to be on the network. And then, boom, that one final fight with Forrest Griffin and Stefan Bonner. And these two crazy fucks are beating the shit out of each other. And it is a wild melee of a fight. And the, the viewership just keeps going up during the fight millions and millions of people watched during the fight like tuned in extra people tuned in because people were calling their friends like bro you gotta yeah, watch, you gotta this, watch shit. this shit this is nuts and this spec people didn't even know what it was <laughs> like what is this what do they got little gloves on what is happening here well, before the ultimate fighter there, there was fans of ufc or cage fighting or whatever but they didn't really get to know who chuck liddell was that right. much you know they didn't get to know those people and then with the ultimate fighter it was yeah they got, got to, to know, know these people. There was like a, a thing that grew, and then you saw this insane fight. It was yeah, couldn't have played out better. Yeah, I mean, couldn't have played out better. God damn, they nailed it. And then boom, and that was a Craig Pelligian show. He was the guy who did Survivor. Like he knew how to do those reality shows. Oh really? I mean, yeah, dude, that. he's a G. <laughs> he's one of the like the the greats in terms of that genre. That that guy knows how to make those fucking shows. That's why it was so good. You know, it didn't feel like a clunky reality show. It was a fun reality show to watch. And so that all, oh, they're bringing it back, by the way. Paulo Costa and Israel Adesanya. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Holy shit. Okay. Tell me you're not going to watch that. I'm for sure going to watch that. That fight is a wild fight, man. Yeah. You know, because Izzy. I want to see Izzy and John Jones, though. Honestly, I, I do to too. Him. I do too. But Izzy and Costa has to happen, man. For sure. <laughs>